This is a 2025 Honda Civic Sport Touring Hybrid. And it's time for a road trip to see what the real world fuel economy of this 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid is. I have to get myself to Wisconsin. I'm starting in Southeast Michigan. Claimed fuel economy is 50 miles to the gallon in the city, 47 miles to the gallon on the highway, 49 combined. I'm going to be on the highway for the vast majority of this trip, but I'm expecting this to be about an 800 mile trip. Let me show you where we're starting. I am literally at a gas tank right now, so I just topped off. We are full of fuel. We've got about three quarters of battery charge as well. And as you can see, it's estimating my range to be 411 miles. And I don't yet have an average fuel economy because we just reset everything. I already reviewed this car. I liked it a lot. So a real world fuel economy test seems like the perfect thing to do. Let's get to it. All right, officially on the interstate heading towards Wisconsin. Now that I'm on the open road, I should probably tell you a little something about this car. This is an updated 11th generation Civic and the hybrid powertrain is new for this year. Honda also tweaked the styling and did add some new technology. This sport touring trim has Google built in as an example. So I have Google Maps, Google Play, and Google Assistant. And the styling tweaks are mainly on the front fascia. And I do think it is an incremental improvement over the outgoing Civic, but these were small changes as well. Because this is the hybrid trim, I have a two liter Atkinson cycle engine paired with a two motor hybrid system. The engine's main role actually is to generate electricity. It does help when you're on the interstate. There are clutch packs to directly engage with the engine, but there is no transmission. The vast majority of the time, the drive electric motor is doing the work and the drive electric motor makes 181 horsepower and 232 pound-feet of torque. So there's a healthy amount of power to play with. The engine on its own, it makes 141 horsepower, 134 pound-feet of torque, and can contribute at faster speeds, as I said. So total system horsepower, when everything's working together, is 200. Honda did not say total system torque, so I assume that your peak torque is the electric motor's 232 pound-feet. I do have a lot of driving aids in this car, and I do have them all on, including lane keep assist. So if I take my hands off the wheel, the car will continue to follow the curve on its own, although it won't take long for it to start getting mad at me for not having my hands on the wheel. And generally, this is a good system. It does a good job. Now, in terms of core driving behavior on the interstate, it's perfectly good. I think the ride handling compromise of the Honda is fantastic. Some people might find it the tiniest bit on the stiff side, but to me, it's plenty compliant over all the bumps and lumps in the road that you'll feel. And the benefit of that is you get sharper handling characteristics when you want and need them. I also find the switch gear easy to reach, everything well laid out. I have dual zone climate control. It's a nine inch center display. Google built in, of course, makes all that really easy. I have a fully digital instrument cluster as well. The only real downside of this car is, is it is a tiny touch noisy on the interstate. You do get a little bit of wind noise at the seams and around the side view mirror, those kinds of places. Road noise is a little bit quieter than wind noise. And overall, cabin isolation for a mainstream compact sedan is competitive. It's just not class leading. I also feel like I could use the tiniest bit more lumbar support. So we'll see how I feel after a couple hours of driving. But so far, pleasant start to this trip. Okay, I've been on the road a little bit more than 50 miles now and thought it was time for a quick update. First of all, really enjoying uh, the switch gear here. The steering wheel is allowing me to control everything I need to on the center display. And when I don't have steering wheel controls, I have Google Assistant. And the wind noise and the road noise, it's really, it's been fine. I'm used to it now. The seat still feels comfortable to me so far. And as you can see, I have the cruise control set to 78 miles an hour. I've gone 52 miles and averaging 40.8, up oh, 41 miles to the gallon with a range of 350 miles left. 
So a bit under the EPA number, I think that when you're dealing with a hybrid and you are relying on the electric motor for part of your propulsion, speed is a more sensitive thing and we are definitely going faster than the EPA would have gone during this test. So yeah, it's a tiny touch disappointing, but you know, we're still getting better than 40 miles to the gallon. All right, everybody, it's been a little bit over 100 miles now and uh, fuel economy is actually creeping up just a little bit, slightly improving. Let me show you. We have now reached 41.4 miles to the gallon, still going at 78 miles an hour, which is right around traffic here in West Michigan. And, oh, there you go, 41 and a half. So things are tracking along just fine. Since I last saw you, had a bit of breakfast, still comfortable, still enjoying the car, still wishing it was just the tiniest bit quieter, but yeah, overall, very pleasant. All right, everybody, 150 miles on the road now, still chugging along just fine. Fuel economy does continue to creep upward, actually. We are now just kissing 42 miles to the gallon, and you can see we've gone just a little bit over 150 miles. Cruise control is still set at 78 miles an hour. However, if I roll this dial down one, I can show you that our average speed and elapsed time, 68 miles an hour, two hours, 12 minutes. And you know, that's just hitting traffic and construction and that kind of stuff. So yeah, at 150 miles in, I am starting to wish for just a little bit more lumbar support in the seat. You know, I should probably stretch my legs in a little while anyway. All right. Time for a quick little break, and I decided to do it in one of my favorite little towns, New Buffalo, Michigan, very close to the Michigan-Indiana border, just a lovely little lake town, and if you look in the camera in front of you, we're headed right towards Lake Michigan, so yeah, great place to stretch my legs. Where's the lake? There's the lake. Okay, a little bit past 200 miles into the trip and fuel economy does continue to tick up. We are now at 42 and a half miles, oh, 42.4 miles per gallon. And if I look, 67 miles average speed, just over three hours into this trip. But I also thought this would be a good time to show you because I'm in much heavier traffic now. This is what the Honda Civic sees in terms of traffic. And you can see what I see out of the windshield and what the car sees in the instrument cluster. I will go ahead and put up all the driving aids on the screen right now so you can check those out, by the way. There is a lot, it's called Honda Sensing. But yeah, comfortable, trip's going well. Okay, I am driving through downtown Chicago right now and we are going through very slow moving traffic, as you could guess but there's something I wanted to show you. This is an advantage of having a hybrid. First of all, my fuel economy is ticking up some more, but also in this slow speed traffic, it's just the electric motor using the battery pack, which is almost full from all the interstate driving. So it can just merrily chug on as a pure EV right now, not spewing any emissions at all, being nice and quiet, nice and calm, nice and smooth, pretty nice. Also, still feeling comfortable. Google Maps has been great, and yeah, trip's going well. Welcome to Wisconsin, everybody. I've now driven a little bit over 300 miles, and the slower, heavy traffic in Chicago uh, definitely lowered my average speed a bit, but improved my fuel economy rating. At the same time, Advantage electric motor happily spinning around, and yeah, fuel economy has been steadily improving this whole trip. Let me show you. We are now up to 43.7 miles per gallon. And as you can see, just a little bit over 300 miles driven. If I flip it to my average speed, you can see that it dropped a bit, 62 miles an hour. Been on the road for closer to five hours now. The car still feels comfortable to me. I'm actually settling into the seat nicely. But when we're on concrete stretches, especially of highway, the road noise is louder than ideal in this car. And that's even with the acoustic windshield that the hybrid trim Civics get now for 2025. So 
the road noise isn't ideal. But again, I need to stress, this is a mainstream compact sedan. This is not a premium car, and it's not priced that way either. I just wish it was a little bit quieter. All right, just a little bit more than 350 miles into this trip and just filled this thing up with gas. It was showing one bar left on the fuel meter and it filled up with 8.3 gallons. So it gives you a sense of how small this gas tank really is. That is the lowest amount I've paid for gas when filling up a car in a long time. And I'll tell you what, I don't mind that. We are averaging better than 44 miles to the gallon. Let me show you, there it is, 44.1. And our average speed, 62 miles an hour. Been traveling for a little bit under six hours so far. Oh, down to 44 even. But I am getting close to the halfway point of this journey and that will end the road trip part of things for the day. Finish this thing up tomorrow. The car's been comfortable. The car's been convenient. The car's been fuel efficient, though at the speed I've been going, not as fuel efficient as the EPA thinks. And the car's also maneuvered through traffic and been enjoyable the entire time. So, so far, I'm quite happy with it. And I gotta say, 8.3 gallons to fill this thing up. <laughs> that surprised me. All right, I'll see you at the halfway point. Almost to the halfway point, but real quick, I wanted to show you something. I am right behind a motorcycle right now, and that's clear when you look through the windshield. But check this out. It's also clear when you look at the instrument cluster. Honda does make a lot of motorcycles, don't they? And it shows when you look at that detail. That's cool. All right, I'm here, the halfway point, and if you wanna know where that is, well, I'll show you. Yep, I'm at Road America in Wisconsin. It has nothing to do with this Honda Civic. But this Honda Civic got me here comfortably and efficiently, and I really appreciate that. And we're only halfway done. Trip home will be tomorrow. First, let me show you what we managed to get here. 44.2 miles to the gallon. Under what the EPA says, but still pretty darn good. All right, everybody, day two of the road trip. I'm already on my way back. Spent the night in Milwaukee, and now, 350-ish miles to go. It's interesting, the fuel economy does keep creeping up. And I did do a little bit of, not interstate driving, but highway driving, and like five miles around city driving, but that's really about it. And I've gotten up to 44.9 miles to the gallon. So that's interesting to see. I'm also keeping my fuel receipts so I'll calculate it that way as well, see what that number turns out to be. But yeah, all right, let's finish this trip up. Okay, back in Michigan, and I wanted to give a quick update. We are losing fuel economy again, but this time I can tell pretty clearly that we have a pretty strong headwind right now. The trees are moving right now. So we've dropped a little bit. Let me show you where we're at. 44.4 miles per gallon. And uh, yeah, the headwind's not helping us. But that is real life. Headwinds happen. There you go. Okay, time to finish this trip up. All right, I am almost back. Traveled nearly 800 miles. I will, after I do my final fuel stop, give the final fuel economy number and that kind of thing but I wanted to kind of sum up what this 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid was like on a road trip, the pluses, the minuses. The minuses, it is a little bit noisier than ideal, and it is sensitive to road surface. So we're on uh, an asphalt pavement right now, and it's pretty good. But if you're on a rougher concrete, like right there, we just went over a bridge, you'll hear that road noise quite a lot. And if it is an extended period of time, that can get pretty loud. It's also not quite reaching the EPA highway fuel economy number 
47 miles to the gallon on the highway is what is official, but I am also going faster. Generally, I would say the weather has been bad, but we definitely had some pretty heavy headwinds on some occasions, but you know, that's just the real world. That's how it goes sometimes. But that jumps right into what's good. It's still been really good fuel economy. I mean, I went to the pump and filled this thing up and my jaw almost dropped the first time when it clicked full at eight and a half gallons, under eight and a half gallons. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Another plus, Google built-in has been great. That's been really helpful. Makes road trip directions and other little things like that super convenient, so that's nice. The car's generally been comfortable. I was a little nervous about lumbar support early in the trip, but that proved to be not really an issue. It was more supportive than I initially thought. Still not perfect. I do wish I had a little bit more lumbar, but not as big of an issue as I feared it may be. So really enjoy the center display and the digital instrument cluster and all the technology that's built in. You know, USB type C charging ports, wireless charging, and also just little things like nice big cup holders. Also, this is a big car inside. This is actually a mid-size car as far as the uh, government is concerned. So I have tons of space inside. That's nice. And this car does just drive phenomenally well. So it's easy to scoot around in traffic and this hybrid system does offer good initial grunt, good initial response to whatever your inputs are because you have that instantaneous electric motor doing the work and then the battery pack, you know, it's a pretty small battery. It's not plug-in or anything, but it's always enough juice to give you a nice good response. So you're not always relying on the internal combustion engine for electricity. And I think it's styled nicely. And most importantly, when those rare opportunities come, it is still a lot of fun to drive. So overall, I give this Civic Hybrid high marks. It's not perfect, but man, it is really, really good. Okay, we're not far from the final stop. I'll fill it up one last time, give you the final report. Okay, you just saw me fill up one last time, top this thing off. I have officially gone over 800 miles and got, drum roll, 43.9 miles to the gallon, according to the fuel meter on the Honda Civic Hybrid. Let me show you. So there you go, 43.9 miles to the gallon, 805 and a half miles driven. And if I move this toggle, see that I averaged 61 miles an hour with traffic and everything else. 13 hours and six minutes of driving. As I showed you, I also started with a full tank, filled it up twice on the trip and then topped it off just now. And I used roughly 19 gallons for this trip. And by super rough math, that puts me around 42 miles to the gallon, if you calculate it that way. A little bit under what the trip computer says, but there's inefficiencies in the way that measure is calculated as well. Um, but whichever measure you prefer, I will go ahead and put the exact figure up on the screen right now of where that was to get you an idea. They were roughly similar to each other, but the computer, the trip computer does seem to say it was a little bit better than what the rough math says. Anyway, there it is, an 800 mile road trip in the brand new 2025 Honda Civic Hybrid overall no matter how you slice it, you're not gonna be spending that much money at the pump, and I think you'll find it to be a pretty darn good road trip car. I'm Robin Warner, thank you very much for watching.